Hi guys, welcome back to ACG Econ Struggles and welcome to another micro struggle. Today we are talking about Roy's identity. Roy's identity relates the indirect utility function to Marshallian demand and it uses the envelope theorem. So the way we're going to talk about Roy's identity is first we will review both the envelope theorem and the utility maximization problem, including Marshallian demand. And then we are just going to use that indirect utility to derive Marshallian demand. We're going to do it for one good, and then it will be a mirror image for the other good. So we're just going to write that result. Timestamps are below if you would like to jump around, but let's go ahead and get started with our review of the envelope theorem. So I am just going to very quickly review this. And all the envelope theorem says is that if we're at the optimum, our indirect effects don't matter. But remember, this only works for small changes. So we're talking about marginal changes, not very large changes, because remember on that graph, large changes get away from that nice flat curve. And so our derivative won't be necessarily zero if we're too far from the optimum. Now let's review indirect utility and Marshallian demand. Here's our utility maximization problem. Like we've seen many times, we know the solution is Marshallian demand x1 star x2 star. We know that our value function here is the indirect utility where it is the utility level at Marshallian demand. So it's just u of x1 star and x2 star. So let's start from the indirect utility function and go to the Marshallian demand. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take the derivative of our value function of our indirect utility with respect to P1. Now I'm gonna do the total derivative first and then we'll use the envelope theorem to cancel indirect effects. So the total derivative of the indirect utility with respect to P1, well, that depends on how our utility changes with respect to x1 star. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go open bracket and then just a little dot because I don't wanna write P1, P2, W every time. So I'm just gonna use this notation. And that's multiplied by how our Marshallian demand for good one changes with respect to P1. It also depends how our utility changes with respect to our Marshallian demand for good two which is then affected by how our Marshallian demand for good two, sorry, that's a star, that's a two, changes with respect to P1. There's also a wealth effect happening here. So what is the wealth effect of a change in price one? Well, wealth effects go the other way because if price goes up, my wealth, I feel poorer. So this is a minus, this is DV with respect to wealth. And then that total wealth effect depends on how much I'm buying of good one. So that is x1 star of dot. All right, now let's go through with the envelope here and cancel some indirect effects. So I know that this is an indirect effect here. I also know that this is an indirect effect because P1 is affecting x2, which doesn't affect x1. And this is an indirect effect because the price affects x1, not u directly. So this is the only effect I have left. So let's just rewrite that. So this is dv c dot over dp1 is equal to negative dv dot over wealth times our Marshallian demand. Well, okay, I can just solve this with algebra to say that x1 star is equal to dv with respect to p1 divided by the partial derivative of indirect utility with respect to wealth. And I can just write the same thing for x2. If I were to do these same steps, this would be dv star with respect to price two over the partial derivative of the indirect utility function with respect to wealth. And then I almost forgot this negative sign in front of both fractions. So hopefully this makes Roy's identity make a little more sense and shows you how you can go directly from an indirect utility to Marshallian demand. If it was helpful, make sure to like and subscribe, and we will see you next time for another case of econ struggles.